chapter, verse 28. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Since thy brother Judas died, we have no man like him to go to go forth against our enemies and Bechides and against them of our nation. So they were trying to rouse up uh, Simon to be the leader. Uh, I believe, or no, Jonathan Salak. They were trying to rouse up Jonathan to be the leader in Judas' stead. Uh, for this cause, uh, for this cause, all, for this cause, all Judas' Judas's friends came together and said unto Jonathan, Since thy brother Judas died, we have no man like him to go forth against our enemies and back at ease and against them of our nation that are our adversaries to that are adversaries to us. Now therefore we have chosen thee this day to be our prince and captain in in his stead, and that thou mayest fight our battles. Upon this Jonathan took the gov the governance upon him at that time, and rose up instead of his brother Judas. But when Bacchides got, got knowledge thereof, he sought to, for to slay him. Then Jonathan and Simon his brother, and all that were uh, were with him, perceiving that perceiving that fled into the wilderness of uh, Theoko, I think Theko, and pitched their tents by the water of the pool of uh, Ashfar. And I'm going to read this excerpt from another point of history, from a different revolt, not the original Haitian revolt, but the revolt that was in response to this United States government occupation that we just brought out a second ago. Um, Charlemagne Peralte, or Char yeah, Charlemagne Peralte, I believe, uh, is how you say it, gathered a group of nationalist rebels and started guerrilla warfare against the United States troops. The troops led by Peralte were called Caicos, a name that, that uh, harked back to the rural troops that historically took part in political turmoil of the, 19, of the late 19th century Haiti. The guerrilla warriors of the Caicos were, uh, were such strong adversaries that the United States upgraded the U.S. Marine contingent in Haiti and even employed airplanes for, uh, for, for counter-guerrilla warfare. So this is the same thing. Basically, Jonathan was playing the same role that, that, uh, that Charlemagne was playing in, in this instance. Uh, now I'm going to skip up to uh, verse 34. Uh, which when Bacchides understood, he came near to Jordan with... Uh, it's a lot real quick. Okay. Uh, when back, which when Bacchides understood, he came near to Jordan with all his host upon the Sabbath day. Now when Jonathan had sent his brother John, a captain of the people, to pray his friends, the, Nab the Nabathites, which are the Nabataeans, Ishmaelites, that they may that they might leave with them their carriage, which was uh, which was much. But the children of Jambri came out of uh, Medaba and took John and all that he had and went their way with it. After this came came word to Jonathan and to Simon his brother that the children of Jambri made a great marriage and were bringing the bride of uh, uh, Nadabatha, which a great train is being the daughter of one, the great princes of Canaan. Therefore they remembered John, uh, their their brother, and went up and hid themselves under the covert of the mountain. Okay, again, that's that mountain, which uh, which was the same thing that the Haitians used to hide in the mountains. But I'm going to keep going. Uh, where they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, there was much there was much ado and a great carriage. And the bridegroom came forth and his friends and brethren to meet them with drums and instruments of music uh, and many weapons. Then Jonathan and they did that, uh, that were with him rose up against them from the from the place where uh, they lay in ambush and made a slaughter of them in such sort as many fell down dead and the remnant fled into the mountain and they took all their spoils. Thus was the marriage turned into mourning and the noise of melody into lamentation. Uh, it's a lot of real quick. Okay. So when they had avenged fully the blood of their brother, they turned again to the marsh of Jordan. Now, uh, this was pretty much the same thing that happened, you know, in Genesis. Uh, in Genesis, when um, when uh, when when, when Samuel and Levi got all of them to get to circumcision again, this is the same thing that happened. They went, they got over on them when they were all distracted, and they were they were having this joyous marriage and got right over on them, man. You see what I'm saying? And the, and it was Canaanites that was there, so the Hamites. This was just probably the same exact people, man. You see what I'm saying? Uh. It's a lot. Um, same thing as the revolt on Christmas uh, that, that our people had. And I'm going I'm to get this real quick. I'm going to jump a little ahead to 2 Maccabees just for, for this little excerpt. Um, and I'm going to start at verse 6. 2 Maccabees 8 and 6. 
Therefore, he came at unawares and burned up towns and cities and got into his hands the most commodious places and overcame and put to flight no small number of his enemies, but especially took he advantage of night for such privy attempts in so much that the, that the brute of the manliness was spread uh, everywhere. So he said he, uh, he especially took advantage of night for such privy attempts, man. So um, basically, uh, uh, you know, these tactics of the Maccabees are the same tactics of the Levites of the Levi Levi himself from Genesis and the Levites that occupied the island of Haiti by basically using using to, using things to their advantage. You see what I'm saying? Whether it be the night, whether it be they were at a wedding, that Christmas Eve revolt, you know, all that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh. I'm going to continue here in 1st Maccabees 9, and I'm going to jump up to verse 50. Okay, uh, uh, second, uh, 1st Maccabees 9 and 50. Afterward, we return uh, back at ease to Jerusalem and repair the, uh, repair the strong cities in Judea, the fort in Jericho and uh, in Emmaus, and Betharon, and Bethel, and Thamnatha, and Paharathoni, and Taphun, these did the these did he strengthen with uh with high walls, uh his gates and with bars, and in them he set a garrison that they might uh work malice upon Israel. He fortified also the city of Bethsura and Gezerah and the tower and put forces in them and provision of victuals. Besides, he took the chief's men, he took the chief men's sons in the country for hostages and put them into the tower at Jerusalem to be kept. I'm gonna read this. Um. Uh, it's the same same thing that happened during the Caicos Rebellion during the United States military, the United States Marine, Marine Corps occupation of Haiti. And I'm going to read this excerpt. Um, uh, oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to read this excerpt. On November 17, 1915, U.S. Marines captured Fort Riviere. So what did they do? They, they were capturing them forts in them strong cities, and they were fortifying them, correct? A stronghold of the Caicos rebels. American President Woodrow Wilson sent 330 U.S. Marines to Port-au-Prince on July 28th. 1915. The specific order from the Secretary of the Navy to the invasion, to the invasion commander Admiral William Deville Bundy, was to protect American and foreign interests. An additional motivation was to replace the Haitian Constitution, which prohibited foreign ownership of land. And that's via uh, the Wikipedia article on the United States occupation of Haiti. Um, I'm gonna keep going on. In December uh, 1914, Fornham arranged for the U.S. Marines to come ashore. Uh, to come ashore. At Port-au-Prince, march into the uh, new National Bank of Haiti and steal two stronghold boxes containing 500,000. So, it's a lot. One second. Uh, like that part, uh, that part is gonna come up later, uh, later in the scripture. So, like, I don't know why I had it there. Um, I'm gonna keep reading though. Um, an officer by career, Charlemagne Peralte, was the military chief of the city of. Uh, Leogon, which the U.S. Marines invaded uh, when the U.S. Marines in, invaded Haiti in July 1915. Refusing to surrender to foreign troops without fighting, Peralta resigned from his position and returned to his native home, hometown of, of, of Hinche to take care of his family's land. In 1917, he was arrested for assaulting the home of an American officer of the occupation troops and was sentenced to five years of forced labor. The same thing he said they took the chief men and they, they put him up in the prison, basically. Same thing they did to Charlemagne in that case. Okay? But I'm going to keep reading here. Starting at verse 54. Uh, here in 1 Maccabees chapter 9. Uh, Moreover, in the 150 and third year, in the second month, Alchemias commanded that the wall of the inner court of the sanctuary should be pulled down. He pulled down also the works of the prophets. And uh, and as he began to pull down, even even at that time was Alchemius plagued, and his enterprise hindered, for his mouth was stopped, and he was taken with a palsy, so that he could no more speak anything, nor give order concerning his house. So Alchemius died, and at that time with great torment. Now when Bacchideus saw that Alchemius was dead, he returned to the king, whereupon the land of Judea was in rest two years. Now I'm going to read this about uh, Henry Christophe, who we already identified with Alchemius, and exemplifying all of his traits. Now this is a... Uh, from uh, the Wikipedia article on Henry Christophe. Illin affirmed that at age 53, King, King Henry committed suicide by shooting himself with a silver bullet rather than risk, uh, uh, risk a coup assassination, man. So even though it's not the same thing, how you was 
uh, stricken with that palsy and he died. He was ill and affirmed. You know, he was he he was fucked up. His health was fucked up, and then he just popped himself as opposed to dying as a result of a coup or as a result of a, a illness. I'm gonna keep going on. Uh, in 1820, the year when construction of the citadel was completed, uh, King Henry Christophe suffered a stroke. So look, he was trying to pull down something. Uh, and, and he was hit with his illness. Now he tried to build his something and he was hit with that stroke. You see what I'm saying? Uh, he committed suicide, uh, and was buried in one of the courtyards of the Citadel. And that was, uh, the first was via his Wikipedia article on Henry Christophe, but that was via, um, Creolingo.com. Um, I'm going to keep going. On. I'm going to skip up to verse 67 here in, uh, first Maccabees chapter nine. And when he began to smite them and uh, came up with the forces, Simon and his company went out of the city and burned up the engines of war uh, and, and fought against Bacchides, who was discomfited by them. And they afflicted him sore, for his counsel and travail was in vain. Wherefore, he was very wroth at, at the wicked men that, great, that gave him counsel to come into the country, insomuch as he slew many of them and proposed to return into his own country. Okay, so this is, um, let me read this, uh. This, um, uh, again, which I, I brought this out earlier, but we're going to bring this out again right now. Uh, the carnage that the slaves wrecked in northern settlements, such as Asul, Limbe, Flaville, and Le Normand, uh, revealed, this, uh, revealed the simmering fury of an oppressed people. The bands of slaves slaughtered every white person they encountered. As their standard, they carried a pike with the carcass of an impaled white baby. Accounts of the rebellion described widespread torching of property, fields, factories, and anything else that belonged to our, uh, to our, uh, to or served slaveholders. The inferno was said to have burned almost continuously for months. And burned it up just like they did here in the Maccabees. But I'm gonna skip to First Maccabees 10 and 70, to, uh, which also uh, is uh, cohesive with that. Um, it's First Maccabees 10 and 70. Though alone, uh, thou alone lifted lifted up thyself against us, and I am laughed to scorn for thy sake and reproach, and why and why dost a lot. Why dost thou vaunt thy power against us in the mountains? Uh, now, therefore, if thou trustest in thine own strength, come down to us into the plain field, and there let us try the matter together, for with me is the power of the cities. Ask and, ask and learn who I am and the rest uh, that take our part, and they shall tell thee that thy foot is not able to stand before our face, for thy fathers have been twice... Uh, Put to flight in their land. So that was this is basically a wicked Edomite talking to the Maccabees. Wherefore now thou shalt not be able to abide the horsemen and so great a power in the plain, uh, where is neither stone nor flint nor place to flee unto. So when Jonathan heard these words of Apollonius, he was moved in his mind and choosing ten thousand men, he went out of Jerusalem where Simon his brother met him for to help, and he pitched his tents against Jope, but the city of Jope shut him out of the city. Because of Apollonius and uh, had a garrison there. Uh, then Jonathan laid siege unto it, whereupon they of the city uh, let him uh, let him in for fear. And so Jonathan won Jope, which is uh, Jopa, or Joppa. Uh, wherefore, when Apollonius heard, he took uh, he took three thousand horsemen with a great host of footmen and went to Azotos as one as one that journey. And there withal drew him forth into the plain because. He had a great number of horsemen in whom he put his trust. Then Jonathan followed after him to Azotos, where the armies joined battle. Now Apollonius uh, had left had left a thousand horsemen in ambush, and Jonathan knew that there was an ambushment behind him, for they had uh, compassed uh, compassed in his host and cast darts at the people from morning till evening. But the people stood the people stood still as Jonathan had commanded them, and so the enemy's horses were tired were tired. Then brought Simon forth his host and set them against the footmen, for the horsemen were spent, who were discomfited by him and fled. Uh, uh, the horsemen also being scattered in the in, in the field, uh, fled as a toast and went into uh, uh, Beth Dagon, their idol's temple for safety. But Jonathan set fire on as a toast and the cities round about and took their spoils and the temple of Dagon with with them that were fled into it. He burned with fire. Thus there were thus were burned and slain with the thus were thus there were burned and slain with the sword uh, well nigh eight thousand men 
And from this, Jonathan removed his host and camped against Ascalon, where uh, the men of the city came forth and met him with great pomp. So basically, you know, same thing happened. There was there was going and it was burning the shit up that that our oppressors was using, man. You see what I'm saying? That happened in, in First Maccabees nine and First Maccabees ten. Same thing that happened at the start of the Haitian Revolt, man, where they was burning shit up, man. You see what I'm saying? Um, now, uh, let's go to First Maccabees uh, 11 and, uh, and 30. Now, uh, I don't have my, um, my Good News Translation, but I want to read this in the Good News Translation because in the Good News Translation, it, um, it helps kind of push this point in, um, uh, 1 Maccabees 11 and 30, King Demetrius unto his brother Jonathan and unto the nation of the Jews sent a greeting. Now, now King Demetrius really said to King King Jonathan. He was referring to Jonathan as a king, much like um, Moses was basically the king of Israel in that time. Even though he was a Levite, he was basically the first king of Israel. Jonathan was pretty much acting as the king in this time. And I'm going to get 1 Maccabees 2 and 26, I mean 20, 12 and 26 a lot. Briefly to make another parallel between Jonathan Maccabee and Moses um, He sent spies also unto their tents who, who came again and told him that they were appointed to come upon them in the night season So he was doing the same thing Moses did He was basically, even though he was being like a religious leader under Israel A so-called religious leader under Israel He was basically acting as the king Much like Moses did And he used the same tactics as Moses did by sending those spies You see what I'm saying? Um, just real quick observation Drawing parallels between Jonathan and Moses, but I'm gonna um, skip to verse 43 here, First Maccabees 11. Um, now, therefore, thou shalt do well if thou send me, uh, if you send me men to help me, for all my forces are gone from thee. Upon this, Jonathan sent him three thousand strong men unto Antioch, and when uh, and when they came to the king, the king was very glad of their coming. Howbeit that, uh, howbeit they that were of the city gathered themselves together in, uh, into the midst of the city to the number of a hundred and twenty thousand men and would have slain the king whereupon the king fled into the court but but they of the city kept passages of the city and began to and began to fight then the king called the jews for help who came unto him all at once and dis, and dispersing themselves th uh, through the city slew that day uh, in the city to the number of a hundred of a hundred uh, thousand also, they set fire uh, on the city and got many spoils that day and delivered and delivered the king. So when they they uh, so when they of the city saw that the Jews had got the city as they would, their courage was abated. Wherefore they made supplication to the king and cried, saying, "Grant us peace and let and let the Jews cease from assaulting us in the city." Uh, with that, they cast away their weapons and made and made peace. And the Jews were honored in the in, in the sight of the king and in the sight of all that were in his realm. Uh, and they returned to Jerusalem having great spoils. So the same thing that, again, they set fire, but the same thing that they did in the sense of helping out America against the British and then again helping the Spanish and the British against the French. You know, um, but uh, real quick, um, you know, uh, and, and the same thing about, uh, uh, or Salak Salak. I was reading something else. And I'm going to skip up to... First Maccabees twelve and a thirty-five. Um, uh, uh, after after this came Jonathan home again, and calling the elders of the people together, he consulted with them about building strongholds in Judea. I'm gonna read this. Um, uh, I just uh, when you or so I'm not gonna read this, but I'm gonna reference this. Uh, if uh, when you look, there's all type of forts, uh, citadels, palaces, and and things like that that were constructed in Haiti during and after the revolution. And pretty much the same thing Jonathan was doing, uh, you know, after they defeated them crackers, you know, uh, building up forts, citadels, or citadels, um, uh, in, in in palaces and things like that. And now I'm gonna skip up to verse 39 here in uh, First Maccabees 12. Now Tryphon went about to get the kingdom of Asia and to kill Antiochus the king. That he might set the crown upon his own head. Howbeit he was he was afraid that Jonathan would not suffer him, and that he would fight against him. Where wherefore he sought a way how to make Jonathan that he might uh, that he how to take Jonathan that he might kill him. So he removed and came to Bassan. Then then Jonathan went out to meet him, 
with 40,000 men chosen for the battle and came to Bethsan. Now when Trifon saw that Jonathan came with so great a force, he durst not stretch his hand against him, but received him honorably and commanded him unto all his friends and gave him gifts and commanded his men of war to be obedient unto Jonathan as unto himself. Uh, unto, uh, unto Jonathan also he said, Why hast thou put all this people to, to so great trouble, seeing that there is no war betwixt us? Therefore send them now home again and choose a few men to wait on thee and come thou with me to Ptolemyus. For I will give, for I will give it to thee, and and the rest of the strongholds and forces, and all and all that have any charge. As for me, I will return and depart. For this, for this, the cause, for this, for this is the cause of my coming. Uh, so Jonathan, believing him, stupid thing. So Jonathan, believing him, did as he bade him, and sent away his host, who went into the land of Judea, as with himself, and uh, he retained but three thousand men. Of whom he sent two thousand into Galilee, and one thousand went with him. Now, as Jonathan, now as <clears throat> now as soon as Jonathan entered into Ptolemais, they of Ptolemais shut the gates and took him, and they uh, and all and all them that came with him, they slew with the sword. Then sent Tryphon and host of footmen uh, and horsemen into Galilee and into the great plain to destroy all Jonathan's company. So what did he do? He messed around and he, you know, he trusts his enemy, as the scriptures told us not to. He was foolish enough to trust his enemy, and what happened? His enemy got over on him. But again, I want to reference something. Just after making an alliance with the heathen, he went down just as his brother did. So again, making alliances with these people. That's why the scriptures tell us make no leagues with them. Man. You see what I'm saying? You're not supposed to make a league with these people, and that's something that. Uh, contributed to our downfall, man. You see what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to skip to chapter 13. No, I'm going to skip to 13, verse 23. Here in First Maccabee. And when he came near Bascama, he slew Jonathan, who was buried there. Afterward, Trifon returned and went into his own land, then sent Simon and took the bones of Jonathan, his brother, and buried them in Moden, the city of his fathers. Now, again, I want to... Uh, just make reference to the fact that I've been drawing parallels with Jonathan uh, Maccabee and uh, Charlemagne Perote, you know, in earlier, earlier on, and I'm gonna, you know, further do that now. Um, uh, Perote was shot in the heart at close range and assassinated. His assassins then fled with his body during the skirmish and chaos that ensued. In order to demoralize the Haitian population, the U.S. troops took a picture of Charlemagne Perote's body tied to a door and dis and distributed in the country. The effect was the opposite. Uh, the effect was uh, was the opposite. Betrayed and killed at the age of 33, Charlemagne Peralte took uh, the dimension of a martyr for the Haitian nation. Charlemagne, Peralte remain, uh, Charlemagne Peralte's remains were unearthed after the end of the U.S. occupation in 1935. A national funeral attended by the then president of Haiti, uh, Stino Vincent, was held in Cap Haitian, where his grave can still be seen today. So it's the same thing that happened. He, he, he was fucked over. He was killed. And, 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 they, and they took his body and did whatever with it. But then, you know, his brethren, people of, you know, people of our, our, our nation, our cloth, came and, and got his body and then had a funeral for it. Same thing that happened with, with uh, Jonathan. His brothers went, got his body or his bones or what have you, brought it back to his city of Moden and had a funeral for it. And all that, and all that, and all, all, the whole nation of Haiti looked at Charlemagne as a martyr. Same thing with, with, with Jonathan, man. You see what I'm saying? To further draw uh, parallels. You know, between the two. Um, I'm going to skip to chapter 14. And I'm going to go to verse 36. Uh, this first Matthew 14 and 36. Um, For in this time things prospered in his hands. So that the heathen were taken out of, out of their country. And that they also that were in the city of David in Jerusalem. Who had made themselves a tower. Out of which, uh, which they issued and polluted all about the sanctuary. And did much hurt in the holy place. But he placed Jews therein and fortified it for safety of the country and the city and, pray, and, and raised up the walls of Jerusalem. So this is what Simon did when Simon Maccabee uh, came into play. Uh, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read uh, this excerpt from uh, history. The 1804 Haiti massacre was an ethnic cleansing which was carried out on the remaining white, French, uh, uh, white population of French Creoles on Haiti by the order of Jean-Jacques Dessalina. Okay, so... Uh, you know, uh, I'm going to continue. Uh, the massacre, which took place in the entire territory of Haiti, was carried out from
from early February 1804 until the 22nd of April 1804 and resulted in the death of between 3,000 to 5,000 people of all ages and gender. Squads of soldiers move house to house, killing whole families, even whites who had been friendly to the black population. A second wave of massacres target white, targeted white women and children, and that's uh, via um, uh, the Wikipedia article on the 1804 Haiti massacre. Now it's the same thing that happened. Simon went around; he ridded, uh, ridded Israel of of its heathen population. You know, got them crackers up out of there and set up our people, man. You see what I'm saying? Same thing Jean Jacques did. In the uh, 1804 Haiti massacre, well, but he ordered, but you know, all, all the Levites on the island uh, partook in. Okay. Uh, now I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna go to First Maccabees 14. I'm gonna skip to verse 41. <clears throat> also, that the Jews and priests were all pleased that Simon should be their governor and high priest forever until there should arise a faithful prophet. So what that really was talking about is. They were like, look, we want Simon. Simon, you know, he got things in order. We want him to reign until the Messiah comes. So they basically wanted him to be in charge, tell you how Shai came, just like Samuel was in charge until, you know, he set David up. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of, you know, drawing in parallels between, you know, Samuel and Simon in that instance that, okay, this, you know, he's a great man. He's a knowledgeable man. He did many great things for our country. He hate and killed the heathen, much like Samuel did. And he, he was to be basically the ruler, even though he had set up uh, Saul, you know, you know, Saul, basically Saul was just, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? He was, Samuel was basically set up to, to raise up David. The same thing that they wanted Simon to be for Yahweh Shot. You see what I'm saying? Um, so like, uh, now I'm going to skip to chapter 15. And I'm going to start at verse 36. Uh, but return in a rage to the king and may report unto him of these speeches and of the glory of Simon, and of all that he had seen, whereupon the king was exceeding wroth. In the meantime fled Trifon by ship to uh, Orthosius. Then the king made Cenobius captain of the sea, captain of the sea coast, and gave him a host of footmen and horsemen, and commanded him to remove his host toward Judea. Also he commanded him to build up Sidron, and to fortify the gates, and to war against the people. Uh... And to war against the people, but as for the king himself, he pursued Trifon. So, uh, so Sindebius came to Jamnia and began to provoke the people, and to invade Judea, and to take the people prisoner and slay them. And when he had built a Sidron, he he set horsemen there, and uh, and a host of uh, and a host of footmen to the ends of issuing uh, out that they might make out uh, outroads upon the ways of Judea as the king had commanded. Now, um, <clears throat> I'm going to read this excerpt. Uh, American President Woodrow Wilson sent 330 Marines to Port-au-Prince on July 28, 1915. The, the specific order from the Secretary of the Navy to the invasion commander, Ad Admiral William DeVille Bundy, was to protect American and foreign interests. I read a little bit of this earlier. An additional motivation was to replace the Haitian Constitution, which, pro which prohibited uh, foreign land ownership. However, to avoid political crit criticism and occupation, the occupation was labeled as a mission to reestablish peace and order and had nothing to do with the diplomatic negotiations of the past or the future, as disclosed by Rear uh, Admiral uh, uh, Caperton. On uh, November 17, uh, 1915, U.S. Marines captured Fort Riviere, a stronghold of the Caicos rebels. Uh, the NAACP Secretary Herbert S. Uh, Seligman, in the, uh, in the July 10, 1920 nation, Wrote, military camps have been built throughout the island. The property of natives have been taken for military use. Haitians carrying a gun uh, were, for a uh, were for a time shot on site. Machine guns have been turned on crowds of unarmed natives. And the United States Marines have, by accounts which several of them gave me in casual conversation, not troubled to investigate how many were killed or wounded. Um, yeah, but that, that lines up with uh, these. Uh, it's a lot. That lines up with uh, Shabbat. I'm all over the place. Uh, with this, what they were basically what they were doing to us, they were uh, coming down with great wrath upon us, and it also lines up with a couple other scriptures in the Maccabees, which I'm gonna hit right now. Um, in Second Maccabees, uh, I'm gonna go to five, 
Second Matthew 5 and 11. Uh, uh, Second Matthew 5 and 11. Uh, now when this now when this was done, now when like, now when this that was done came to the king's ears, he thought that Judea had revolted. Okay, so when it came to Woodrow Wilson's ears, he sent uh, he sent the U.S. Marines there. Okay, whereupon removing out of Egypt in a furious mind, he took the city by force of arms. So he took Haiti by force of arms, and commanded his men to of war not to spare such as they met, and to slay such as went upon. Uh, went up upon the houses. So it said that they, they, uh, machine guns were turned on crowds of natives, uh, were turned on crowds of, uh, crowds of natives, a lot. And, uh, oh, sorry, that's right here. And it said, uh, Haitians carrying a gun were shot on sight. Um, and that, uh, they, they were just slaughtering a gang of us in, at, at that period of time. Uh, uh, verse 13, thus, or, uh, and slay such as went up upon the houses. Thus there was killing of young and old, make, uh, to making a way of men, women, and children, slaying of virgins and infants. And there were destroyed within the space of three whole days, fourscore thousand, wherefore forty thousand uh, were slain in the conflict, and no fewer sold than slain. Okay, so this is the same things that were happening to us then. Now I'm going to skip to another one. Uh, the next, uh, First Maccabees 6 and 3. Uh, the coming in of this mischief was sore grievous to the people, just like the coming in of the mischief of the United States uh, Marine Corps occupation in Haiti was sore uh, uh, grievous to the people. And then I'm going to get uh, skip to verse eight, Second Matthew eight, starting at verse eight. So when Philip saw that that this man increased by little and little, and that things prospered with him still more and more, he wrote to Ptolemy as the governor of. Uh, so Lysaria and Phineas to you more aid to the king's affairs. So basically, kind of, which I'm going to go into another lesson about how the United United States Marine Corps occupation led to the bankruptcy of uh, of of Haiti, and it was all really uh, uh, the fire was lit by Citibank because Citibank collaborated with the United States Marine Corps. But basically, this is the same thing. They uh, Philip basically his part was played by. Uh, the, the man from Citibank who uh, who basically was getting upset and seeing that Haiti was 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 kind of generating money or, or what have you and uh, he he sent he sent the uh, he 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 wrote to the governor to the to the president to the government and they sent the the military occupation there was robbed Haiti okay which is exactly what happened here in Second uh, Maccabees eight uh, so like, um verse nine then for with choosing Nicanor the son of uh, Partruclus, one of his special friends, he sent him with no fewer than 20,000 of all nations under him to root out the whole generation of the Jews. And with him, he joined with him. He joined also Georges, a captain who in matters of war had great experience. So Nicanor undertook to take so much money of the captive uh, of the captive Jews and should uh, defray the, uh, the tribute of 2000 talents, which the king was to pay to the Romans. And as I read earlier, uh, Forty percent of Haitians' gross national of Haiti's gross national product went to uh, United States of America as a result of the occupation. Same thing happened here with Nicanor, man. You know, I want to jump back to First Maccabees. Though. Uh, I'm gonna go to 16, starting at 11. Uh, Moreover, in the plain of Jericho was Ptolemy, as the son of Abubas, made captain, and he made abundance of silver, and he had an abundance of silver and gold, for he was the high priest's son-in-law. Wherefore, his heart being lifted up, he thought to get the country to himself, and thereupon consulted deceitfully against Simon and his sons to destroy them. So here we go. We got another nigga who's looking to get a name. You know, the Lord is never dealing with niggas who's looking to get a fucking name, man. All right? Just want to put that out there. All right? But uh, uh, now, now, now Simon was visiting the cities that were in the country and taking care for the good ordering of them, at which time... Uh, he came down himself to Jericho with his sons, Matthias and Judas, in the hundred three score and seventy of year in the eleventh month called Sabbat, uh, where the where the son of Abu was receiving them deceitfully into his little hole called Docus, which had a which had which he had built which he which he had built made them a great banquet. Howbeit he had hid he had hid men there. Uh, so when Simon and his sons had drunk largely, told me, 
uh, and his men rose up and took their weapons and came upon Simon into the banqueting place and slew them and his two sons and certain of their servants, in which doing he committed the great treachery and recompensed evil for, evil for good. It's the same thing that happened. Again, our tactic coming back to backfire on us to get over on people when they're least expecting it, when they're weak, when they're feasting, or when they had just been circumcised or what have you. You see what I'm saying? But really the point is, uh, I want to I reference this, this point in history. Uh, same thing that happened to Jean-Jacques de Salini, de Salina and a further um, uh, you know, uh, investigation into his death. Uh, uh, disaffected members of de Salina's uh, administration, including Alexander Pichon and Henry Christophe, began a conspiracy to overthrow the emperor. Which the same thing in this dude, man. They want to get a name for themselves, so they made a, a conspiracy to overthrow Simon. Uh, de Salina was assassinated north of the capital, no, north of the capital city, Port-au-Prince, at uh, Port uh, Lanage, now known as Pont Rouge, on the 17th of October, 1806, on his way to fight the rebels. That was via the Jean-Jacques uh, Wikipedia article, which I read just earlier. Now I'm going to go a little further into it, though. Uh, a little further into it. After two years of guerrilla warfare, this is what happened to uh, Charlemagne. After two years of guerrilla warfare, leading, uh, leading Peralta to declare a provisional government in the north of Haiti, Charlemagne Peralta uh, was... Uh, was betrayed by one of his officers. Again, betrayed by a Jake, you know, to get with the heathen. Uh, Jean Baptiste Conze, who led uh, disguised U.S. Marine Sergeant Herman H. Hannigan, later, uh, later notoriously promoted to second lieutenant for his exploits, and Corporal William Button into the rebels' camp near uh, Grand, uh, Grand, uh, uh, Grand Riviere du Nord, uh, which is Grand, the Great River in the North. Uh, Peralta was shot in the heart at close range and assassinated. His assassins then fled with his body during the skirmish and chaos that ensued. But it's the same thing that happened. You had Wicked Jakes collaborating with Esau to take down Jake. The same thing happened, uh, you know, here in the Maccabees a couple of times. And it happened in Haiti a couple of times. Same thing. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to jump to 2 Maccabees, the fourth chapter now. I'm going to start at verse 39. Um... Now, when many sacrileges have been done committed in the city by Lysimachus, uh, with with the consent of Milanus, and the root thereof was spread was spread was spread abroad, and the multitude gathered themselves together with Lysimachus, many vessels of gold being already carried away. Whereupon the common people, rising and being filled with rage, Lysimachus armed about three thousand men, and being first to offer violence, one Arinus. Being the leader, a man far gone in years and no less in folly. They had then seen the attempt on Lysimachus. Some of them uh, caught stones, some clubs, others taking uh, handfuls of dust that was uh, next at hand and cast them all together upon Lysimachus or Lysimachus and those that set upon them. Thus, many of them, uh, many of them, they wounded and some they struck to the ground and of them. Of them they forced to flee, but as for the church robber himself, they killed uh, beside the treasury. Now, um, uh, Melanius was like, uh, basically he was a Benjamite that collaborated with Esau to actually uh, get, attain the office of high priesthood, man. And he was, you know, in charge of a lot of his wicked uh, brethren. And, and they're basically playing the same part that the Benjamites in the book of Judges played when they um, came to the Levite when they raped his, and they raped his woman to death. And they were trying to get with him, man. They were being these wicked Benjamites coming up against the Levite. And then what later happened was the whole nation of Israel came and took their ass out. Which is um, later what happens in, in to, to, uh, to them when, when you read in there. Um, I'm just going to hit a couple more points before I close up. Um, we'll go to 2 Maccabees 5 and 21. Uh, so when Antiochus had carried, out, had carried out of the temple a thousand and eight hundred talents, he departed in all haste unto Antiochia, weaning in his pride to make the land na uh, navigable and the sea passable by foot, such as uh, such was the hardiness of his mind. Now I'm gonna read this uh, via the Democratic Underground. In December, in, in December of uh, 1914, Farnham arranged for the U.S. Marines to come ashore at Port-au-Prince, march into the new National Bank of Haiti, and steal two strong, uh, strong boxes containing 500,000, which at that time money was eight was was eight times the value you know that it is now so it was about eight million dollars which 
go a long way, especially in Haiti. And Haitian currency and sale to New York, uh, where the money was placed in the new in, in New York's in New York City Bank, which is now known as Citibank. Um, this made the Haitian government totally dependent on foreigner for finances uh, with which to operate, which is the same thing that uh, Antiochus did in, uh, in 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 that case, man. And that again was via the Democratic Underground. And I'm gonna hit this last one before I close up. This is a uh, First Maccabees six, uh, verse sixteen. And therefore he never withdraweth his mercy from us, and though he punished with av with adversity, yet doth he never forsake his people. And that goes for all of Israel, man. You know, down there on the island, they had countless hurricanes and earthquake and all all type of stuff wrong. All type of stuff wrong. You know what I'm saying? And you know all of, but all of all of all of our people, man. You know, he 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 jacks us up, man. But he will never forsake us, man. Remember that, you know, and I, um, you know, I just, you know, hopefully brothers learn something, uh, you know, got edification out of that, uh, you know, it took me a lot of research to do, you know, um, something that I've been wanting to do for about coming up on six months now, you know what I'm saying, so, you know, I hope brothers, I really hope brothers, you know, got edified from that, um, and with that, I just want to say all praise to y'all, by some y'all shine, man, you know, double honor to the elders of Ruel, shalom to, you know, the one-third in the elect.